yeah good e good evening children good evening one and all this is sucharita the tgt social studies atma kuryas today we are going to learn about the part 2 unit 3 hydrosphere of the 9th standard let us share our slides i am going to share my slides for the lesson hydrosphere part 2 in this session we are going to learn about the relief of the ocean so what is the relief of the ocean as we know we have been learnt in the before session about the reliefs of the earth now we are going to learn about the hydrosphere part 2 in this we are going to learn about the reliefs of the ocean what does the relief mean next what does the relief mean we are going to learn now the definition of the relief the relief the re what is the relief mean the relief of the ocean relief refers specifically to the quantitative measurement of vertical elevation change in the landscape or the ocean floor so what does this relief says about it is a quantitative measurement where it is showing vertical elevation and where it is showing again on the two places one on the landscape and other on the ocean floor on the landscape in the previous class we have been learned that is the relief features of the earth surface we have been learned now in this session we are going to learn about the relief features of the ocean floor what is deep inside the ocean we are going to learn about it so how can we know about it we can know about it by the difference between the maximum and the minimum elevations within the given area usually of limited extent so there is a limited extent there is a maximum and the minimum elevations in this region so based on that only we can calculate or we can fix a particular point over there and we can say this is so and so region the oceanic relief features are in the form of mountains basins plateaus ridges canyons and trenches so we heard about the mountains basins ba uh, basins plateaus ridges and canyons even on the surface of the earth also only trench we are going to learn something different in this ocean water that's why these forms of this ocean relief are also called as a submarine relief why it is called submarine as it is deep under the water it is called as a submarine relief next so we are going to learn about the ocean floor what does the ocean floor mean it is literally the floor of the ocean the landscape of the ocean floor is much like which you would see on the land just way more dramatic and without all that life you will see underwater mountains called sea mounts cliffs trenches and the abysses they are so deep that no sunlight penetrates what does the social ocean floor mean ocean floor is a region where we can see only the aquatic animals which live underneath the water or the seabed but if you go with the land surface we we find many living beings are existing on the surface of the earth like plants animals human beings many other living organisms but underneath the water we find only the aquatic animals which can survive underneath the water that is this is a marine some of the living animals live uh, aquatic animals live in the uh, seas and oceans that is a saline water and some live in the fresh water so here we are going to learn about the marine water living beings Uh, and the study of the geology of the ocean floor if what it is called as it is called as a geological oceanography which also includes plate tectonics and the paleo oceanography so in this next we are going to learn in deep what does it mean now if you observe this world map clearly you can observe the major oceans and the seas of the world on the right and the left side of the world map you see north pacific ocean why the pacific ocean is given twice you may be thinking why because here this is a flat surface of the earth actually the earth is a spheroid in shape it will be actually the pacific ocean is only on one side but as it is on the flat surface we are showing the pacific on the either sides of the map and that is a the largest and the deepest ocean in the world the pacific ocean is the largest ocean and as well as the deepest ocean in the world and the second largest is the north atlantic ocean which we find between the north america south america and the africa 
So you may find a small difference, North Atlantic Ocean and the below is South Atlantic Ocean. Why there is a difference? Why? Because the equator is dividing the earth into two equal parts. Above the equator is called as the Northern Hemisphere and the below is called as the Southern. That's why we call the North Atlantic Ocean and the below is the South Atlantic Ocean. And the third largest is the Indian Ocean. As we know, it is a little below our India. When it comes to the th fourth, the Southern Ocean or the Antarctic Ocean. So, if we observe the Southern Ocean or the Antarctic Ocean. Antarctic Ocean, sometimes some geologists and the scientists say that it is a water which is a combination of Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. But some say that no, it is a, uh, some geologists say that it is a separate ocean. And the smallest and the last ocean is the Arctic Ocean, which is uh, located or situated on the topmost part of the topmost part of our world. So, if you see there, it is totally under the frigid zone. That's why the majority time, more than eight to nine months, the Arctic Ocean is frigid. Means it will be the water will be changed into the snow or the hard ice-like structure. And you can observe some important seas also. In the North America, Hudson Bay, below the North America, Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea. And above the Africa, you see the Mediterranean Sea. Beside that is the Black Sea. Beside that is the Caspian Sea. And in the northern part of the Europe, North Sea and the Baltic Sea. When it comes to our India, they gave Andaman Sea. But actually, Andaman Sea is nothing but the Bay of Bengal as Andaman is located over there. On the either side, western side, it is the Arabian Sea. When it comes to the south, uh, China side, that is the East China Sea. And near the Japan, we have a Japan Sea. And near the Australia, we have the Coral Sea. So these are the some of the important seas which are found on the world or in our Earth's surface. Next. So we are going to learn about the relief of the ocean in detail. Here uh, we have been got six uh, important relief of the ocean. But actually we have only four important relief of the ocean. Continental shelf, continental slope, uh, abyssal plains and trenches. But actually I thought that submarine canon and the mid-ocean ridge also is, are the one of the important part which are in, located in between them. That's why I have been given these names and we are going to learn about the each topic in this session that where it is located, how much depth it is located and what is the specialty, how does it help us, everything we are going to learn about it. Next. Now. Before I start the session, I want to give the small definition of the beach. Why? Because the relief of the beach starts with the, uh, the relief of the ocean starts with the beach. Means when we go to any vacation to any coastal areas, we enjoy the beach and the view over there. What is a beach actually? It is a gently sloping strip of land that is a border between the water and the water and the land. It is a border between the water in the land that is a near where it is located or where it is found it is found near a sea or the oceans next is a small picture where we can observe the sea the beach and the seashore where you find the water that is called as a seashore where you see the sandy material with the small molten rocks that is called as the beach next slide here we observe in the next slide also the same that we see the seashore and as well as the beach. Next, here see, observe this picture or the slide very clearly. Here, the green part shows the continent and a beach, the grey color shows indicates the beach and the next is the shoreline. So just now we have been seen in that picture, beach and the shoreline. Now, after the shoreline, what is coming from the shoreline to a certain depth, 100 to 200 meters, continental shelf. From the 200 meters to the 3000 meters is a continental slope. Then a deep inside, if we go, continental rise. And if you observe the green color, so probably we show the green color to the plains. So we are seeing the plain here also underneath the seabed also. What is that called as abyssal plain or the deep sea plain? When it comes to the mid or oceanic ridge, 
fridge and you observe a red color magma what is that magma volcanic eruption which comes out when any volcano burst out underneath the water you may be thinking children that only we see the volcanic mountains on the surface of the earth near the japan fujiyama or near some islands which are very active but actually we don't we have to know that even some volcanic mountains are also present underneath the seabed or the ocean bed that's why the tsunami occurred sometimes when this magma comes out volcanic eruption takes place the waves increases its height and it brings the natural calamity so if you observe a small island is found what is an island here island is a piece of land which is surrounded by water on the four sides gayat gayat is also one of the volcanic erupted mountain but it is flat if you observe the mid organic oceanic ridge it is not flat it is made with the two plate tectonic uh, when it merge when it comes near to that then the mid oceanic ridge will form but gayat is a flat ocean a uh, flat ocean volcanic eruption and if you see the last part it is a oceanic trench trench means the deepest part of the sea or the ocean so this if you observe this picture clearly we can and try to understand all the relief features of the ocean clearly in the next picture also i am going to show you the same relief features but based on the depth of the Uh, uh, ocean floor see 200 meters 0 to 200 meters is the continental shelf from there a little depth if we go it is a continental slope and from uh, 3000 to uh, 6000 uh, between we see continental rise then abs uh, abyssal plains then oceanic trench then submarine ridge so here i have been given this picture based on the depth of the oceanic floor so deep oceanic basin based on the depth we'll go in detail of each and every topic now the first topic is the continental shelf what does the continental shelf mean the term continental shelf is used by the geologists generally to mean that the part of the continental margin which is between the shoreline and the shelf break where the depth of the water is approximately 100 in the 200 meters So, what is the continental shelf? According to the geologists, it is a margin between the seashore and the continental shelf. It is a region which is located between the shore and the shoreline and the continental shelf. At which depth it is? Approximately between the 100 and the 200 meters. And this continental shelf occupies about 7.6 percent of the ocean. area and where do we find the largest continental shelf in the world we find the largest continental shelf in the world is the siberian shelf where does it come near the arctic ocean we have been learnt na that it is a frigid zone there the siberian shelf will be coming which is located in the arctic ocean and next in the next continental shelf how it is helpful to us or a white is important to us here we find a lot of fish wealth as just now we learned that some fishes live in the uh, fresh water and some live in the marine water so here we have a good source of aquatic animals not only aquatic animals different type of fish which we get that's why the fishermen who are living near the coastal areas has their main occupation as a profession as a fishing not only that we also get crude oil natural gas also in this continental shelf and we build the seaports and the harbors which help us to do the trade from one country to the other country not only that ocean currents and the runoff from rivers bring the nutrients to the organisms that live on the continental shelves the ocean currents which bring uh, not only that the runoff of the rivers the water uh, river water which brings the nutrients these nutrients are helpful to the organisms which are, who are living in the continental shelves that's why one of the important uh, relief feature of the ocean is continental shelf next we will be going into the continental slope continental slope is a deepening sea floor out from the shelf edge to the upper limit of the continental rise so where is this located this is located between the continental shelf and the continental rise at which uh, at which depth it spreads between the 200 meters to the 3000 meters it will be in between 
this death and how much uh, area does it comprise it comprise 15 percent of the ocean area and what are, what is the specialty of this continental slope is typically it is about 20 kilometers wide this continental slope is spread up to 20 kilometers wide and it mostly consists of the mud and the silt and often cross cut by the submarine can canyons submarine canyons are present near to the continental slope they are but what does it consist of mud and the silt we are going to the next topic is uh, submarine canyons uh, so what is a submarine canyon a submarine canyon is a steep sided valley cut into the seabed of the continental slope sometimes extending well onto the continental shelf having nearly vertical walls and occasionally having canyon wall heights of up to five kilometers if you observe this content canyon what is a canyon actually we'll be listening these canyons which are made by the rivers on the land but here we are saying canyon a submarine canyon because it is situated or located underneath the seabed where it is located near to the continental slope and the vertical wall it will be the it will be uh, the wall here is up to the height of the five kilometers just assume how much the five kilometers is so it is the height is more enough coming to the next slide the guides what does the guyot mean? Guyot is also a table mount. As just now I told, it is a isolated means it will be away from the remaining things. It will be at a side. Submarine volcanic mountain with a flat summit more than 200 meters below the sea level. Such flat tops may have diameter greater than 10 kilometers. So it is a flat submarine volcanic isolated mountain with the diameter how much the opening of that volcanic mountain can you expect it is sometimes greater than the diameter of 10 kilometers it seems and why this the name actually was derived from the swiss american geologist this uh, word guyot was derived by the swiss american geologist whose name was arnold henry guyot on his name only this part of the relief feature of the ocean is named coming to the next we get we go to the deep sea plain or the abs abyssal plain what is this abyssal plain or the deep sea plain and deep sea plain or the abyssal plain is an underwater plain on the deep ocean floor so plane itself says it is a flat surface so just now when we observed in that picture it is a flat surface with the green color so probably we'll show the planes in the green color at which depth it is between 3000 to the 6000 and abyssal planes are the gently sloping areas of the ocean basins how much area does it cover in the ocean basin 76.2 percent is covered by the abyssal plains or the deep sea plain and one more specialty of this region is this they are the flattest and the smoothest regions of the world it will be very smooth and as well as a very flat and abyssal plain is an underwater plain on the deep ocean floor usually found at the depth of the 3000 to the 6000 it is underwater plain and the mid ocean ridge and the abyssal hills are a part of the abyssal plains sometimes it is near to this mid ocean ridge and the abyssal hills are located in the same elevated movement elevation means height elevated near to the abyssal or beside the abyssal plains next coming the mid ocean ridge what is the mid ocean ridge a mid ocean ridge or the mid oceanic ridge is an underwater mountain range formed by the plate tectonics so we learnt about the tectonic plates even under the, the surface of the earth also in the same way underneath the seabed and the ocean bed also this tectonic plates are uh, uh, located here and because of this tectonic plates only mid ocean ridge have been formed how does it form when the convection current rises in the mantle bead the ocean crust and the uh, crust and create magna where two tectonic plates meet at a divergent boundary so when we observed in that particular picture or the slide that two tectonic uh, features are coming from the either side in between the magma is found that region is called as a mic 
ocean ridge next comes to the topic of oceanic deeps or the trenches this is the deepest part of the ocean where we are seeing so 6000 above whatever the region are found in the ocean are called as the oceanic deeps or the trenches when we go these are the natural spots we the deepest trench in the world is the challenger or the mariana trench at what depth it is 11022 meters 11000 mean more than the 11 kilometers in the pacific ocean this trench is located and when it comes to the atlantic ocean puerto rico or the naves Puerto Rico or the Naves is the deepest trench in the Atlantic Ocean with the depth of 10,475 meters. Java is the deepest trench in the Indian Ocean with the depth of 7,450 meters. So these are the deepest trenches in the world from the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. Coming to the next topic here, we are going to see the clear slide of a ocean bottom relief so first the green structure shows continent then afterward continental shelf then continental slope then submarine canyon then comes the continental rise and guyot in between as we have been known it is a isolated volcanic mountain or erupted mountain mid ocean ridge abyssal plain abyssal hill continental margin so the region from the continental slope to the continental rise is called as a continental margin and we see the magma and the trench in between the trench the deepest part of the ocean bed or the seabed here sometimes we even see the sea mountains means small small mountains are also found here just we are thinking that only mountains are found on the surface of the earth no even underneath the water also we have hills we have mountains we have volcanic eruptions we have the plate tectonic uh, tectonic plates underneath it so this is the clear uh, picture i want to explain you through this what does the ocean bottom relief mean or the relief of the ocean mean now we know that the majority part of the earth is covered with the ocean water and the sea water in the past previous class we have been learned that 97 percent of the earth surface is covered with the saline water so what does this saline water mean why the water is saline what made them to become salty we are going to learn in this topic saline water is a water that contains a high concentration of the dissolved salts sort of or different salts and the minerals which are found in the water make the water to become saline or the salinity the salt concentration is usually expressed in the ppt ppt that is the parts per thousand or the parts per million it is calculated as the amount of the salt in grams dissolved in 1000 grams of the sea water for every 1000 grams of sea mount sea water how many grams of salt is present based on that calculation we express the ppt so according to the united states geological survey it classifies the saline water in the three salinity categories what are they they are saline water brackish water and the fresh water now we observe the same in the form of a picture in the next slide here we will see that where do we find the fresh water how can we say that it is a fresh water how can we say the when the ppt is between 0 to 5 then we say that region comes under the fresh water when the ppt is between 5 to 30 that region comes under the brackish water and this brackish water are found near the mangroves and the swamps and as we know the fresh water is found in the rivers streams lakes ponds and the tanks etc when it comes to the saline water where we see the saline water the sea and the oceans so and the some salty lakes also here the ppt that is a parts per the thousand is above uh, it is between 30, uh, 30 to 50 or above 30 then that region comes under the saline water region of the ppt based on this we can observe that why the water is saline now we are going to learn first between the 30 to 50 ppt is a saline water below when we come 
5 to 30 ppt is a brackish water and when we go below it is when the ppt is from the 0 to the 5 ppt that is a fresh water this fresh water we are using for our drinking purpose irrigation and different uh, forms which we need in our daily livelihood uh, electricity we are preparing the electricity also from this water only so Coming to the next slide, we are going to learn that why the water is saline, what makes the water saline and which brings the water or which makes the water to become salt or saline in the ocean and the sea. Salt in the oceans come from the two sources. One, runoff from the land and the opening in the sea floor. Runoff water means, we learnt in the past session, runoff water means along with the rain water, many nutrients soil, mud, silt, leaves, etc. all will come along with the water and that river at last comes and joins into the sea or the ocean. Because of that, why it brings the nutrients and the minerals? It touches the rocks on the land as the major source because these rocks consist of different types of salts and in that salt is dissolved in the water and it comes and joins into the sea water. Over millions of years, rains, rivers and the streams have washed over rocks containing the compound sodium chloride. You might have been heard about this word sodium chloride in your science subject chemistry. So, which is also called as the table salt which we use in our cooking purpose. Without the sodium chloride, the food is not tasty. That why, that's why it is very important. We, have, we know that from the sea water only this sodium chloride is prepared through a process so it will be evaporated for many number of days then we get the salt and that will be purified afterwards coming to the reasons next slide it says that why the water is so, uh, so saline and where we find the water which make the water saline the two icons that are present more often in the sea water are chloride and the sodium these two make up over 90 percent of the dissolved ions in the sea water so sodium and the chloride are the two ingredients or the two icons which make the sea water sea water which make the sea water to uh, saline why the the concentration of the salt in the sea water is salinity in about 35 parts per thousand just now we learned that if the saline water when do we call it as saline water when the ppt is above 30 so here we observe if it is about 35 parts then it is called as a saline water or the salt water or the salinity but over time as rain fell to the earth since how many years the rain is falling on the earth since 3.8 billion years the rain is falling on the earth and from that day onwards the minerals and the nutrients and a different type of icons are mixed into the river water and the river all the river water comes and joins into the seas or the ocean that's why it made all the seas and the oceans to become the saltier in the next slide we are going to learn that how it is which ocean is having the or more saltiest the atlantic ocean is the most saltiest among the five oceans in our world on average there is a distinct decrease of the salinity near the equator and the both the poles because of the different reasons the salinity of the water is decreased near the equator and near the north pole and the south pole the ice is only made of water without salt you may be uh, feeling uh, astonished to see that ice water which is present in the seas or the ocean is made without the salt and where do we find such type of water or the ice that ice is in the arctic region and the antarctic region without any salt that ice is made without any salt the fresh water or the pure water is there that's why the people who are living in the polar regions directly use that ice for their different purpose in their daily lives. The salinity of the tears, when you cry, we get the tears from our eyes. That tears also consists of sodium and potassium. Because of these two ions, the, sal uh, the tears of our human beings are becoming saline or salinity in the next uh, topic or the next slide we are going to learn about why the rainwater is not salty 
because the evaporation takes place more from the seas and the oceans as the 97% uh, water is in the saline water only but why, t why the rain water is not salty why the rain water is fresh water and the clear water because the clouds bring rain are built up by vapor whatever the clouds is consisting inside them in the form of the water is not the direct water it is a vapor it is in the form of the vapor the heat of the sun evaporates sea water the sun is evaporating the sea water which produces vapor directly the water is not going to form the clouds the water is changing into the water vapor and then it produces the clouds we have been learnt in the last previous class in the session about it that's why the rain water is not salty it is fresh water which we use for the different purpose in the rain water we find only two percentage of the sodium chloride whereas when we go to the seas and the ocean it consists of 77.8 percent if you see the difference then only we can understand that why the river water is fresh and drinking water and why the ocean water and the sea water is saline water which is not useful for the drinking purpose we are sitting near a well we can use that well water to drink but when we are sitting near a ocean or a sea we can't use that water for drinking purpose when we feel thirsty that's why we have to conserve the fresh water or the rain water in the next slide we are going to learn that the factors which are affecting the salinity on the surface layers so which are affecting the salinity first is evaporation in the precipitation and second in coastal regions by the fresh water flow from rivers and in polar regions by the process of freezing and the thawing of ice so in the coastal regions we see the water flow and in the freezing point polar regions we see the ice next is the winds by transferring water to the other areas and the fourth is the ocean currents all these four are the important factors which are affecting the salinity on the surface layers of the ocean next we are going to learn what is the definition two important definitions of this part of the hydrosphere isobars a line joining the points the seabed at an equal vertical distance beneath the surface sometimes referred to as the depth contours so contour line we have been learnt about the contour line in the previous classes contour lines are the lines which are joining with the same height then here isobars are the lines points joining the sea equal vertical distance underneath the seabed it is a equal vertical distance underneath the seabed isohaline what is isohaline a line joining the points in the ocean having the same degree of the salinity where we find the same degree of the salinity there a line which is joining the points of that particular ocean is called as a isohaline these are the two important definitions of this lesson when it comes to the next learning what we have been learnt in this lesson the relief of the ocean the salinity of the ocean and why the water ocean of the water is saline and what are the minerals which are found in them which made the ocean water in the sea water to become the saline or the sal, uh, salinity water and what are the different relief features of the ocean in the next session we are going to learn about the next topic is the ocean temperature ocean currents and ocean as a resource now tomorrow uh, let us meet in the next session thank you